I'm here to talk about stealing stuff for your D&D games. That's stealing stuff from other games. Uh, not nicking stuff out of your friendly local game store. I mean, this is just one example, uh, but I think it's a good example. And I think it's a, a, a nice little uh, thing you can just grab really, really easily. Tie it in with something that already exists in uh, D&D 5th edition. Uh, which is your bond. Uh, now bonds and traits and flaws, uh, they're new in 5th edition I think and I th you know I've seen people say it's you know I don't I don't need this I'm an experienced role play role player um, you know I don't need a, I don't need a, a, a table to roll a, you know character trait on but I think they're really good for new players and it really gets you thinking about a character you know, beyond just the numbers that's on your character sheet. In the uh, Fantasy Flight games, Star Wars, Edge of the Empire game, which is a really cool game, actually. You should try it. You should play it. It's a really good system. Uh, it doesn't use uh, numbered dice. It uses uh, custom, uh, what they call narrative dice. So basically you uh, build a dice pool of your skills and abilities and you roll against bad dice, uh, so like difficulty dice, um, and you're basically just kind of trying to cancel out bad symbols by rolling good symbols. Um, but that's, I mean, that's not necessarily what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is obligation. Uh, so obligation, you know, it ties into your bond in D and D basically, but it gives it gives a a mechanical uh, numerical value to obligation. Uh, so what do we mean by obligation? Well I'll tell you. Um, the the example that most often gets used is you're a smuggler and you owe a great deal of money to a hut. Um, so I mean some other examples might be uh, you're a Jedi and you um, vowed to train your ex-master's apprentice, even though you don't really agree with the fact that you should be trained. Uh, another example from another era might be you're a deserter from a fascist military complex. Uh, they're hunting you down. And... Uh, one more example, um, you were raised and trained by a group of freedom fighters who later abandoned you uh, and you've got all sorts of issues to do with that. So in um, Edge of the Empire, uh, each of these each of these obligations will have a numerical value uh, and then that's all sort of added up for the for the party. Now, I don't think Han and Obi Wan and Finn and Jin, that rhymes, uh, would be an adventuring party together because they all exist in different eras, and uh, I like to keep my games canon and my videos canon. Uh, so this is strictly a non-canon video. I'm not talking about canon. I'm just going to keep saying the word canon. I find the concept of canon hilarious. But also I completely understand why it's super important. Uh, you know, this fictional thing in this fictional universe did happen, but it's still fictional. But this other fictional thing didn't happen. So that's why we don't have Jackson the Green Rabbit anymore, which is a great shame. But hopefully, you know, later on down the line, there'll be a film about Jackson. Um, so getting back to obligation. Um so we have numerical values. Um, you know, if uh, Han has uh, paid off his debt to Jabba the Hutt, um, as happened in an old Marvel comic, um, which isn't canon, um, he would reduce his obligation. Incidentally, in that Marvel comic, uh, they they hastily had to uh, reinstate the debt when it uh, became apparent that in Empire Strikes Back, the debt was a major plot point. That's not important. That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, so this numerical value, um, you would you would add it all up uh, together for your adventuring party. So, you know, you'd add on Finn's obligation, you'd add on Obi-Wan's obligation, so forth. 
uh, you would make a percentile roll. It's one of the one of the few areas in the game actually that doesn't use a narrative dice. So you use the percentile roll and uh, the number that you roll that corresponds with the position of uh, the character's obligation that would come up that session. So it's a little bit like uh, in a TV series. It's like it would be it would be that character's episode. I remember watching a, an episode of Rebels. They steal some experimental weapons from the Empire. Open up the weapons. They're going to sell, sell it to some trader. Uh, and it turns out these weapons are the weapons that were used to uh, wipe out Zeb's race. The Lasat on his home planet. And when I saw that I thought, oh well, Zeb's obligation came up. So it was kind of, they needed to sell these weapons to make money. But, you know, he was put in a moral quandary because he'd seen the kind of terrible you know damage these weapons have done to his people so that's that's a really good example of obligation and if you're playing DD, &D, it ties into your bond you know i mean i've seen i've seen players sort of completely ignore and disregard their their bonds and their flaws uh but if they're coming into the game and you've got a whole session that's based around one of these things uh that can that can provide a really really good you know, possibly a, a break from a really sort of story based campaign. Um, you know, it'll really allow your characters, your players to uh, engage with their characters. Um, one other thing from uh, the uh, Star Wars role playing game, and as I say, it's a really, really good game, uh, Edge of the Empire. They also produce Age of Rebellion and Force and Destiny. Um, these are all these are all the same game. These are all books that uh, kind of outline you know the same game system, but they've each got a different focus. You know, Edge of the Empire is I think Edge of the Empire is the most interesting. Edge of the Empire is smugglers, bounty hunters, the the scum of the universe basically. Age of Rebellion is uh, you know military personnel. You know, in the Alliance, uh, it would be spies, it would be sh hotshot pilots, saboteurs, that kind of thing. And of course, Force and Destiny, that's your Jedi type characters, your Force sensitive characters. Uh, and Obligation, you know, is called something slightly different in those other, the, those other strands of the game. Uh, in Age of Rebellion, it's Duty. And in Force and Destiny, it's Morality. But it's all, it all kind of boils down to the same thing. Um, so, uh, obviously these fantasy flight games they've got the narrative die system but something that goes all the way back to the first uh, star wars role-playing game which i played uh the west end games star wars role-playing game that came out in 1987 it was a big deal um and you know this was late 80s role-playing games had been around about 10 years they'd been big for about 10 years and people were sort of looking for sort of slightly different ways of playing um, people sort of moved away from D&D &D, I think uh, a lot of people thought it wasn't a very realistic system I, mean, I think real, realism in role playing games it's like you're asking the wrong questions really everything is an abstraction but people really kind of worried about armour class which is you know, clearly an abstraction hit points you know um, Star Wars you know didn't try and get realistic in any sense and that that game system and that book i mean if you could get hold of copy read it it's really really well written you know both in terms of what star wars is and how to sort of translate that into game and how to translate that style uh, of movie making you know that kind of swashbuckling adventure you know you know it's not it's not realistic at all um, translating that into a game they're really really concerned with and it's also it really really gets to grips with the setting I think um, I know for a fact a lot of people bought those books and all the source books and supplements and never never played the game they're just good to read um, so they had a concept called force points and I think a lot of games around at the time had similar things I mean you would call them hero points luck points um, in uh, in the current edition, in the uh, Fantasy Flight Games version, obviously you're rolling uh, success and you also get advantage um, and you get failure and threat. 
that you've got the kind of highest level of these uh, symbols that you can roll and uh, there's the highest level of success is triumph. Return of the dorks. When you roll a triumph, you not only you not only, only contributes to success, but like it means something awesome happens. It's like the sort of thing that would happen in a trailer, you know. And we've got a little bit of that in D and D. If you roll a twenty, um, that's a critical hit in battle. Uh, it's not part of the rules, but a lot of people use that for skill checks as well. If you roll a twenty in a skill check, they kind of call it a critical success. And if you watch those uh, much maligned Hobbit movies. Uh, you know, those movies that were, you know, 14 hours long each that really should have been about two hours and just one movie, you know, you adapt a kind of thin children's book into a kind of long epic. It didn't really work. You're adding a lot of nonsense. Uh, one thing that I, a lot of people took issue with, but I loved, was the sequence where they escape from the uh, elf uh, kingdom in Mirkwood and they float down the river in barrels. Now, in the book, they just kind of calmly float down the river to Lake Town. Uh, in the film, it's this monstrous action sequence with, you know, orcs flying around everywhere, you know, Legolas doing backflips, that, that sort of thing. Um, but that really made me think of a role-playing game. That really made me think everyone's rolling tri triumphs the whole time because when, uh, I think it's Bomber uh, manages to get his barrel you know up on the ridge and he rolls over 27 orcs and flips back uh, all the all the while, <laughs> while he's uh, restrained in a barrel hilarious and ridiculous and that's exactly the sort of thing you should be doing in role-playing games in my opinion um and you know play you play edge of the empire you roll a couple of triumphs that's exactly the sort of thing you do the more ridiculous the better and it, it goes back to you know in in the star wars films you know people get thrown off you know speeder bikes going at 200 miles an hour and they you know they, they're completely unhurt because it's heroic fantasy right so to bring a bit of that into D and D, maybe you know we've got the advantage and disadvantage system, which is really nice, really ele elegant. Maybe if you roll two twenty, when you've got advantage and you roll two twenties, something amazingly ridiculous can happen. You know, I think uh, just rolling a twenty on one dice, fair enough. That's good. That's great. That's a critical hit, but. You know, in that incredibly rare instance where you'd roll two twenties, uh, I think something impossible and ridiculous should happen. Uh, so that's basically uh, just a little bit of advice of grabbing things from other game systems. Um, you know, obviously we've got thousands of role playing games at this point. Um, I I can highly recommend Edge of the Empire. Actually, it's a really fun system. The books are beautiful. Um, it's really really well written if you're in if you're into star wars you know it's a no-brainer just get hold of it give it a go um but if you you know you're just kind of uh sticking to D and and oh you know i can completely understand that uh it's maybe worth picking up some other games looking at how they do things and maybe just grabbing one or two things just to mix things up every now and again so there you go that's a that's a video i'm just i'm just really excited about the last jedi you know What do you think is going to happen? I don't know, but it's probably going to be awesome. Lightsabers will be involved, you know, porgs. They're like the new Hugh Jibs. Yeah, see you later.